You know what's probably the most frustrating thing about false professing Christians? It's their willingness to not treat Jesus as Lord. I've had conversations with so many people through the years who would call themselves Christian, yet whenever we would get into some type of disagreement regarding Christianity, the minute I go to opening my Bible app or opening the Bible to resolve the matter, because that's what we do as Christians, when we have a dispute, we take it to the Word. That's when they want to end the conversation, like literally end the conversation. That's when you hear things like, no, I don't need that. I know my God. I know my God's word. I don't need you quoting scriptures at me. You know, it's amazing. But in light of that, I was thinking the other day, going back to the early 1920s, early 1930s, you know, the prohibition era, when men like Al Capone ran cities like Chicago. Now, think about this. In those days, the mobsters were probably the lowest you could go in terms of societal standards. I mean, they may have said that at that time, they may have said that maybe pedophiles were worse, but, but back then, to be a mobster was probably the most criminal thing you could be. And even amongst these different mafia families, they had rules. Rules you had to follow or you literally died, you were killed. Okay, Their boss was their lord, and they had to do what he said or you died. I mean, doesn't that kind of sound like something else? Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying there is a distinct correlation between... Christianity and the mafia, but what I'm saying is, I'm using this as an illustration. These men, they were pimps, they were drug pushers, they were murderers, money launderers, the list goes on. But even they had rules. Now this is interesting. I've listened to interviews of mobsters who actually made it through that lifestyle without being killed. And one of the things they always were touted as being was a stand-up guy, meaning they did what they were supposed to do. They followed rules, they followed the rules. They didn't disrespect the wrong people. They kept the code. It's amazing how Christians can come along and say, nope, nope, we don't have any rules. I can believe whatever I want to believe, do whatever I want to do in the name of Christ, and I don't have to know or care what the Bible says. It's amazing how 1920s gangsters in a lot of ways have more structure than many of today's professing Christians. We live in this world that is cursed because of sin and that is antagonistic to God. We live in the midst of a world system where because of the noetic effect of sin, every aspect of who we are is affected and infected by this sin. This world tells us when to think and why to think and how to think and what to think about. That's what this world does to us. It's broken. It's corrupt. And it too is antagonistic to our God. And it's all we know. It's all we know. It's interesting, you know, when, when I was a boy, I was fascinated with gangsters. I just was. Um, probably because I grew up in South Central Los Angeles, surrounded by gangsters. But um, <laughs> I was fascinated with the old gangsters, right? With the guys who, you know, wore, wore double-breasted pinstripe suits and fedoras and machine guns. I just, the combination of those things, you know, the wingtips, the whole deal, you know? I was just fascinated. And, and the interesting thing about that to me was that even in this, even in this world, right, we, we, we think of the world of, of gangsters and mobsters as this anything goes kind of world, but it's really not. There's rules. And in many ways, they're more serious about the rules than people who live outside of their worlds. But there's an entire world that they live in with rules that, that just make sense to them. And in that world, there's certain things that you do and that means I've got to kill you. And it just makes sense. And if you're outside of that world, looking into that world, you go, that's crazy. Not if you're in it. If you're in it, it's completely logical. And here's a newsflash. That's us. That's all of us.
under the federal headship of Adam.